but surely it's the location of where the bullet was. Because he was shot in his abdomen, but this is on the floor. You mean take that. There's a contradiction here with this bullet hole. What do you mean, sir? You don't see? Quite simply, the bullet hole itself is too low. If the victim was shot in the stomach, the hole should be much higher up. What if the guy was shot while he was sitting or lying down, sir? That would be illogical. The victim leaned against this shelf here after being shot, which suggests that he was standing when he was shot. And that means... Wait, what does that mean, sir? It means you need to use your brain every once in a while instead of mine, detective. In any case, it means someone made a faulty assumption. And it was from this mistake that our current contradiction was born. It was the faulty assumption that caused the problem with the bullet hole's position. The Order of the Files. I believe the order of the files is a bit off. I mean, I put them back in the wrong order just now. Hey, actually, I think the labels on the files are wrong, sir. Oh? Yeah. See here how the files that were shot begin with the number zero? What are those doing all the way down there after one, two, and three? It's really weird. Actually, the way they are organized now is the correct order. They're exactly as I see them in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all out of order. Those white binders are special, so they're arranged a little differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the crime occurred. Aha. So that's it. I believe the killer made the same incorrect assumption as you just did, Detective. Let's rearrange the files in numerical order and see what we find out. Do you think it'd be okay to prop the body back up to... How it was before it was moved. They finished processing the crime scene, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. Please, Detective Gumshoe. As I suspected, the bullet hole is now where it should logically be. The killer went through my files first before shooting Mr. Faith. And then put the files back in numerical order, I guess. Exactly. And then proceeded to shoot the victim. Why would someone kill a man and then look through your files while Bart die? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown into disarray twice. Once before, once after the crime scene. But why? Hmm. Now the crime scene is as it was at the time of the murder. Time to give it another look. For some reason as to why the victim's body was moved. There is no time to ponder that now. Let's continue with our investigation, Detective. Better right that, sir. We're in a go. Oh my god, do we have a Dog and Romp uh, 1 incident right here? It was moved to hide this. Th this? Gum shoe. What? What is that? What does it say? Gum shoe on there in blood. I'd say it's some incredibly incriminating evidence. Yes, indicative of criminal activity indeed. No, wait. There's got to be some mistake. It's Judge Worth, sir. Help me. Say something, sir. It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is that all, sir? about me and my situation. Gonna have to remember to mute that. Is this what the killer was really after? Hmm. Investigation complete. Looks like Jim was able to leave us in the name of his killer in the end. And this most important message managed to reach us. Tell you, it wasn't me. You can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. If you're going to accuse Detective Gumshoe of being the culprit, I sincerely hope you have some proof to back it up. 
Jim's words, they're more than enough when you say... If that's how you want to play it, then at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it. I don't like this one bit. There is something strange about this man's attitude. And there must be some sort of flaw to his logic waiting for me to dig out. Mr. Edgeworth, wh what are you going to do? What I always do in court. I'm going to cross-examine him. Say it with me, kids. This is going to be fun to edit. One way or another, I'll expose the flaw in his logic with this technique. Oh, how do you do that? Could you explain it to me, sir? Might as well. <laughs> Alright, first I listen to the witness's testimony. I find a flaw in the testimony, something that contradicts the evidence. Open the organizer and present the piece of contradictory evidence. To present something, I simply touch the present button, but that's old news. But it's not like there's going to be a flaw in the testimony every time, right? Correct. And those times I need to press the witness by touching the press button. Sometimes by pressing I can draw out new information and new or modified testimony. I think I get it, sir. I'm sure I try this technique out during investigations, too. Very well. I'll even show you how it's done. Watch carefully. Mr. Portsman's logic. Ted Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed theft instead. That's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters his body was hiding. And it'll be by his final words that you'll be brought to justice. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message points to his killer. I can hear Jim's voice and he's calling for his killer's arrest. Hmm. Are you sure you're not mishearing his words, Mr. Portsman? There's no way Detective Gumshoe is the culprit here. I'll find the flaw in this man's logic. And expose it with credible evidence. Hmm. You know, she stole Jim's gun. Messed up the files to make it look like you had committed theft instead. So you moved Jim's body, I was sitting in front of the bookshelf. So you didn't notice the bloody letters his body was hiding. Hmm. Actually, there's a gigantic flaw in his logic, a gap so wide that even the good detective can spot it. Clue Mr. Portsman in by presenting with some evidence. But it's the fact, I mean... I mean, hey, oh no, Gumshoe stated he doesn't have his own gun. What is the flaw here? I'll press? You know, there's something I've been meaning to ask. <laughs> what is it? Why do you call the victim Jim? When clearly his name is Buddy Faith. Isn't it obvious? Jim is the perfect name for my companion. Jacques and Jim. Don't those two names go together like peanut butter and jam? But Jim isn't even close to the guy's real name. Well, Jacques and Buddy just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was a third of a bunch of guys I decided to nickname Jim. Hmm. He talks about the victim like he was his pet. Alright. <clears throat> when in doubt, just press on everything. I didn't think it was necessary to dishovel my shelves twice to do that. That's true. Okay, then maybe his real intent was theft. Hey, you accused me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth. It's a possibility. Maybe your salary's been cut so much that life is getting a little too rough to handle. How do you know that I eat three square meals every day, pal? Okay, so all three of them happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor thing. What an evil prosecutor you were paired up with. What a motive, no?
Hmm. And why would Detective Gumshoe do such a thing? Because the body was getting in his way. He had to mess up your bookshelf somehow, right? Anyway. But... <clears throat> why do you think that the killer didn't notice the bloody letters? The body was covering it quite well, wouldn't you say? That's how he missed it. But judging by what I've seen, it doesn't take much for your detective to miss something. Who do you think you are, I am? You know nothing about me, pal. There's a lot a person can understand about another from first impressions alone. Can't say I disagree with him on that point. Why don't you say something, sir? <gasps> no, you do, Mr. Edgeworth. Despite his lack of attention to detail, I don't believe the detective to be the culprit. Nobody could have overlooked the bloody letters, and I can prove it. With evidence. Can ask for a better setup. For the game finishing spike. Mm-hmm. So you're like a volleyball kid, okay. Okay, but by that logic, then that means one of the things shouldn't be missing, but by one of the files being missing, that means the killer would have noticed that and taken it out. Perhaps you're not aware, Mr. Portsman, but there is a serious flaw in your logic. Heh, <laughs> bringing a bit of the courtroom into this, I see. No problem, I'm game. I can help, but find it odd. Excuse me? Odd that a fellow prosecutor would be brought down by the power of his own office. Wh what are you talking about? Oh, you're joking. I get it. Is that it? Or what, whatever, I skipped it, I'm sorry. If you have the time to laugh, then you have the time to take another closer look at this. Do you still not see? If not, may I direct your attention to the missing file? Wh what? That's impossible! What's impossible, Mr. Portsman? Um, uh, nothing. Files on that shelf are all about a certain case. When the killer went to take the file after murdering your partner, I highly doubt they could have missed the bloody letters written on the spines. Objection. It's possible that they could have taken the file before committing the murder. I think it's pretty obvious that the file was stolen after it was written on. Missing letters in the detective's name where the file should be as proof. Yeah, I and mean, the S is gone and there's only half an H. Detective Gumshoe really was the culprit of this case. I highly doubt that even he could have overlooked his own name written in blood on the files. Especially as a detective who can't stand the sight of blood. <laughs> that reaction. <gasps> Which means, what exactly was that me? This die message. Oh my god, wait. Which means, what exactly? What does that make this die message? It makes it the work of a criminal intent on tampering with the crime scene. That's so low. I can't believe the criminal tried to bend this whole thing on me, sir. I'm gonna get him, sir. You'll see. I'm gonna have the mother arrested in no time. Well, Mr. Portsman? <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely splendid. Logic deserves an Olympic gold. I appreciate the praise, but it doesn't change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Meh, you win some and you lose some. That's how life goes. Everyone's so cheery, even though I feel more dead than alive. Ah, uh, but you know, it really is a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however. What was it this time? It's still after me, pal. Hear me for a second. Who has the key to this office? That would be... me. Mr. Edgeworth just proved that I'm innocent, pal. Oh no, he put on the jacket. That's absolutely right! And I acknowledge your innocence. Why do I sense that you still have something to say? Can you stop, please? Well, I was thinking... Did you know there is one other person with a key to this office? One 
other person? Hey, you there! Yes, sir, what is it, sir? Would you kindly fetch and escort that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? The girl's a member of this building's security. Think of her as a material witness. S security. If you say security, they'll stop it, pal. Don't. What's wrong with him all of a sudden? I believe she needs no introduction. I have called upon Miss Maggie Bird, a member of security. Oh god, she's back. What security outfit is that? D Detective Gumshoe, sir. Maggie. Miss Bird is the security guard on watch tonight. I see, and your point is? The point is that she could very well have used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the office doors in this building. Wh wh what? You are not the guilty party, Detective Gumshoe. And the only other person with access to this room is Miss Bird. How dare you! I would never sneak into someone's room! That's right. I refuse to believe that Maggie's the culprit, pal. Um, it was me! That's right, I did it. Can we take that as a confession, Detective? Um, well, it wasn't really me. But it definitely wasn't Maggie, pal. So yeah, it was me. If it was you, I have no problems with that, right? Please refrain from flying off the handle, Detective. There's no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, Detective. He understands what I'm saying here. And that girl is the only one who could have committed the crime. And for one simple reason. What is this reason? For suspicion? It's pretty obvious that Miss Bird snuck to your room using the master key. I mean, if Detective Gumshoe isn't the one who opened the door. And that leaves only Miss Bird as our prime suspect. On top of which, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Making it all that more probable that she was the one who faked the dying message. So you're saying she used a master key? I thought he was going to go somewhere with that. Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then, this is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflexes and reaction time, especially for an athlete like me. I wonder if there was anyone else other than Miss Bird who could have used the master key. It seems that the only way to get Mr. Portsman to give me more details is to press him. Mm hmm. press him on it specifically. Do you think it's a bit early to be jumping to conclusions? Are you saying there's another way to open the door other than the master key? Oh, I get it. Perhaps you had a spare made for someone else. I'll have you know I have never made a spare, so what are you insinuating? Nothing. Guess I should have known better than to suggest that someone like you would. Hmm... Are you sure Miss Bird is the only member of security who could have used a master key? There's only one person on staff at this time of night, and tonight she's it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? That's, um, true, but... but I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir. Wasn't able to? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes, moving on. I hate to get sidetracked by something unrelated. What do you mean, unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal. But you can't really trust her not to tell lies. Plus, I hate wasting time. Hmm, should I hear Miss Bird out? Uh, yes. Not so fast. I, too, am interested in hearing what Miss Bird has to say. Didn't I just say it'd be a waste of time? We don't need to hear her lies. I'll be the judge of that, Miss Bird, if you please. 
I discovered that the master key was missing at around 1 a.m., sir. What do you mean by missing? As in, it wasn't anywhere in the security booth, sir. The killer must have stolen it. Mr. Portsman, I believe this to be an important piece of testimony, don't you? I can't believe that someone like you would be taken in by such words. You're not lying, sir. If that's the case, then I'd like to know why you have the master key now. I, I don't quite know. It just reappeared all of a sudden, sir. Ha! A likely story. Where's your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? But you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I never lose things. Stares directly at the camera. I can practically guarantee that. Then me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone stole it. Yeah, pal. Trust me. You want to test just how bad our luck is. Unfortunately, I can't deem this piece of testimony as conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. Ugh. But. But. I still haven't established Maggie's motive for breaking into Mr. Edgeworth's office. Her motive? Didn't we already establish that? It was theft. I mean, the culprit clearly went through the bookshelves and at least tried the safe. Is this Mr. Portsman says, Detective? Can't ignore the fact that all the evidence points towards a motive of theft. But I'm done taking blows. It's time to counterattack with a few facts of my own. Mess up shells with a wipe down safe. And that's where we got you. Because only prosecutors know about this. Not even Gumshoe knew about it. to continue insisting that Miss Bird was set on stealing something. Why not? It's the truth, after all. It was also by your logic that we came to the whole theory conclusion anyway. That may be, but you must also be aware of the fact that the safe is a secret safe, the existence of which is only privy to prosecutors. I find it a little hard to believe that a hidden safe was a part of her cunning plan. But... But she could have found it by accident while she was turning everything else upside down. I highly doubt that. I say the culprit knew exactly what they were looking for. After all, only the bookshelf and the safe were targeted. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know about that safe, pal. And that means there's no way Maggie could have known about it either. Then are you proposing that the killer is a prosecutor? Interesting conclusion. That's definitely looking more and more probable. What's wrong, prosecutor? Do you have a different suspect in mind now? I... I... Curses, why? What made you... What's the angry face all of a sudden? It's... It's all my fault. What do you mean? It's Jim. He knew about the existence of the secret safes. What did you just say? We were partners, like inseparable conjoined twins. That's why I told him. I filled him in on the secret safes. Then that means... Yeah, I know. I had only just told him, too. Obviously, it was wrong of me to tell him. I still can't quite believe it. But the thief who broke into your room was probably Jim. Now oh, he's claiming that the victim was the thief? And you were simply trying to stop him, weren't you? Miss Maggie Bird. Excuse me? I mean, you are a security guard, right? That's your job. But killing has gone a bit too far, even in your risky profession. What the? You're still accusing Maggie of the murder. Yes and no. I mean, she has stolen upon Jim, who had probably drawn his gun. I get it. It was self-defense, wasn't it? No, I, I couldn't. I could never do something like that. Not even as a security guard, sir. Plus, even if he was the thief, he wouldn't have a key to this office. Which is precisely why he had to steal it, wouldn't you say? It was Jim who stole the master key. Ah. 
pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with oh the duh. pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with us unless well unless you retrieved it from Jim after you killed him. Mr. Portsman, are you honestly accusing your own partner of being a thief? I don't want to admit it, but it's the only way for everything else to make sense. Has he no honor? Now then, I think we're done here. The investigation waits for no man. Would you people be so kind as to see yourselves out? You can't kick us out. This is Mr. Edgeworth's office. Ah, uh, but I'm the one who's been assigned to this case. You're all suspects to varying degrees and therefore ineligible to run this show. Listen, pal, how many times do I have to say this? Maggie can't be the culprit. Detective Gumshoe, calm yourself. But, sir, we have no choice but to accommodate his request. For now. Haha, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. At least one of you understands. Now then, if you could remove yourselves from my crime scene, I'd be most grateful. Hmm. <laughs> Mark my words, Mr. Portsman, we will meet again. It's a formal request from the legendary prosecutor himself, and I suppose so. Now, don't disappoint me, you hear? To be continued. I mean, we know he did it, but they don't. Is there any time to do your game to save your data? Alrighty. Four eighteen a.m. God, that's early in the morning. But yeah, next time we continue on with this, considering we're not doing like investigations and trials, this is going to be interesting to uh, break apart into parts. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. See you next time for some more Let's Play. Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations. Is that the correct order of the things? Copied and pasted the thing from Wikipedia for my uh, schedule, so that's like the correct order. Yep, okay. Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Alright. See you next time for more of this game. Goodbye.